Thank you once again for joining us today at Historic Investments. Today what we're going to do is to explore the Mauser C96 broom handle. No, we're not going to look at all the guns in this image. It's a vast field and books have been written about that subject. What we're going to do is to see which gun or guns would make sense for you to purchase as the first gun in your collection because that's a very important purchase. It doesn't have to be an expensive gun, but it needs to be a righteous gun. You need to really be able to look at that gun carefully, absorb the exterior details, disassemble it, look at the guts, look at the insides of the grips, look at every piece from every angle because it's only with that kind of knowledge that you'll be able to buy with confidence some of the rarer and more exotic examples, which quite frankly are going to be a lot more expensive. So with that in mind, why don't we see if we can narrow the focus and uh, move forward. Oh, and by the way, I keep forgetting to say this, but if you really like what you see, let us know, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear your comments and do take a second to leave one below. The Mauser C96 was made in near continuous production for about 40 years. And as you might expect, there are a lot of models out there. You've got a lot of choices and what you need to do, especially for your first gun, is try to decide what makes sense to you. Now, sometimes through personal circumstance, you've got a very narrow focus. You want a gun just like your grandfather brought back from the European theater. So you probably want a wartime standard commercial with imperial markings or a red nine. That's understandable. Maybe you live in a state with a lot of really tough firearms restrictions. You don't want to jump through the hoops. You don't want to go through the waiting periods. You just want an antique. Well, in that case, you're probably looking at buying one of uh, several different cone hammer variations or an early large ring transitional pistol. But for most of us, there are a lot of options out there. So the question is, what would make the most sense for a starter pistol? Well, of the examples on this table, you want a gun that's ideally was made in large quantity and was unlikely to be altered. You want to try to buy your first one, you know, through some assurance that it's in the best original condition possible because that's the example that you want to study. With that in mind, we should focus on the pre-war commercial, either a wartime standard commercial or Red 9, or one of the 1930 commercials. So let's now look at just those three models and see if we can narrow our decision even further. While each of these pistols has a number of features to commend, I definitely would not go with the late 30 commercial as your first collector pistol. And the reason is this is a late production gun that was finished with the salt blue, not typical for earlier production. Furthermore, there are only four numbered parts, the frame, the subframe, the barrel extension, and the floor plate. If you really want to become familiar with earlier Mauser pistols, you need to look at guns that were more extensively serial numbered. So for the moment, let's put this one aside. The next gun we should eliminate is the Red 9. You might be surprised at that. After all, it's pretty popular. Well, that's kind of the problem. It is an earlier gun. Yes, it's rust blue. Yes, the small parts are serial numbered, including the grips, but it's proven to be so popular and prices have gotten to be so high over the last few years that the majority, yes, over 50% have been touched up, either partially or completely reblued. Small parts have been replaced, restamped, and the fire blued parts have been enhanced. This is not a gun that you want to buy as your first pistol, not unless you've got some serious mentoring. So for the time being, let's just put this thing aside and concentrate on the pre-war commercial. For most people, your best choice for your first collectible C96 probably lies with the pre-war commercial. It's got a lot of early features that you can take and use towards the examination of other pistols. At the time, they were also thought to be amongst the best of Mauser's production, whose fit and finish was second to none. They were all finished with a rust blue and nicely polished. So you can tell from this example, it's a nice gray uniform rust blue, and you can always see some little machine marks in the recesses. Very typical for the C96s. Let me focus up close and so you can see some of the uh, other finer details. You can look at the proofing marks and the proof marks here were always applied before the gun was finished so you don't see any raised edges around them. You should be able to look at the uh, sight bar as true for most of Mauser's early pistols. The sight bar was graduated from 50 to 1000. You can look at the extractor and look here you can see how it was polished with uh, some polishing marks perpendicular to the long axis. 
you can see the uh, fire blue is applied to the rear sight, but the polishing marks, and that's what I really want to show you here, see how the polishing marks are perpendicular to the long axis. Look and make sure that the uh, trigger hasn't been repolished or touched up. These are fire blue triggers, and again, should be just barely able to see some of the polishing marks here. Now, one of the things that you're always reading about, and one of the first things that, that come to your attention is, is the gun all matching? So you see the full serial number on the left side of the chamber flat, and the serial number, let me back this up just a little bit, the serial number now is uh, repeated on the frame, it's uh, repeated on the subframe, and the last three digits are repeated on the back of the hammer, the top of the bolt, and the type bolt stop. But don't let me stop you. This is your first gun. Uh-oh, what is this? How come these numbers aren't matching? Well, these are, for the pre-war commercials, these are assembly numbers or contract numbers and are non-correlative with the other numbers on the pistol. At this point, you need to disassemble the gun and look at the interior. There are plenty of videos out there that show you how to disassemble the C96. That's not the point. You need to know how to disassemble the guns if you want to feel confident about what you're looking at, what you're collecting, and really how to even value the merchandise. Well, in this case, we've got a pre-war commercial that's field stripped. We've already talked about how the frame is numbered, so let's push, just put that aside. As far as the uh, subframe is concerned, let me uh, focus that in. We've already talked about the, uh, the fact that the subframe has got the full serial number on the back. We talked about the last three digits on the hammer. Let me show you that the last three digits are also repeated on the sear, not on the outside of the transfer bar, but frequently, not always, but frequently on the inner surface. The locking block is marked with the last three digits, as is the floor plate, as are each of the grips. What about the follower? Well, not so much. The followers for these guns were not numbered. They were just marked with the uh, Mauser inspection marking. And the same holds true for the uh, firing pin, which is why we won't disassemble it. As far as the stocks are concerned, yes, the lugs are all marked with the last three digits of the serial number. If it's an original stock, You'll notice that, look very carefully at the numbers. There's no suggestion that they've been chased by hand. They're nicely marked, and the polishing is perpendicular to the long axis of the lug. Here you can see the outline of the uh, plunger as it's inserted into the top arm of the lug. So there you have it. One nicely field strip Mauser C96. We can see the details of the stock lug the floor plate, the subframe, the proof follower, the grips, the locking block, and of course the details of the frame and the uh, barrel extension. Thank you once again for having joined us at Historic Investments. It doesn't really matter whether you picked up a few new tidbits of knowledge with respect to a miniature cap gun, a full-size non-firing replica, or the real thing. The most important thing is hopefully you learned a few things that will aid you in your collecting. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button, please subscribe. In any case, we look forward to seeing you again and good collecting.